Welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast. This is a podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey to becoming a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. My name is Carmen, and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl. I also have a website, newleafdesigns.nl, where you can find a lot of free patterns, both crochet and knitting, um, and I will list all of the other things while you can find me somewhere on the screen. Um, Timestamps for this episode can be found in the description box. I will list the time of a certain section and if you want to skip ahead or you know rewind you can just click that. Um, I am recording from the living room today. In the last episode I mentioned we would be picking up our new kitten Momo and uh, we have picked her up last weekend and the living room is still the only room she's comfortable in and as i need to watch her i'm just gonna record in the living room <laughs> um she might come and join us later um but she's sleeping right now i haven't been knitting very much the last few weeks because i still had some um pain in my wrist so it's almost completely gone now. I've only had to wear uh, the brace uh, thing for like one or two more times after the last episode and um, I've just been really careful with you know overdoing and overdoing things. So I have two projects that I have been working on and I also have some spinning because I found that with spinning I'm not really turning my wrists and that's what usually um, gives me some some pain so first off I'm gonna show you the knitting project and those are my lavender socks and last time I was here at the star stitch marker and so I've knit this much and then I was at the halfway point of the ball of yarn so I started the second sock and I did not do the ribbing just yet because um, I haven't weighed the ball of yarn before I started so I'm not sure if I need to rip back a little bit more. So this is the second one. So yeah, I've knit this much. I uh, took it um, in the car when we went to pick up Momo. Uh, it was a two and a half hour drive to the Cattery. So uh, yeah, on, on the way there I got to knit, but on the way home um, I was just too busy with comforting Momo because she was freaking out <laughs> um, you know it's very understandable because it must be super scary for a little kitten to you know be in a moving in a moving car so this is what I have knit uh, on the second sock and I've been taking it on my lunch breaks at work and again I just I really like this yarn and um, the way it's knitting up in this self-patterning style, I really like that. Um, it's from Drops. It's Drops Fable. Um, yeah, it's just a wool and nylon sock blend. I don't have the tag. Um, yeah, it's just a regular kind of one of the more scratchy uh sock yarns but you know it's fine for yarns uh, for socks and 
I do like the patterning so it's all in the ball. I, I think it's so funny when, when I take this on my lunch break because my colleagues are like, I sense that they're looking at, you know, what I'm knitting and they're like, but how? <laughs> it's like they see that, um, you know, they see the pattern, but then they're like, what? Uh, so they didn't really understand. So I said, yeah, it's just the yarn that's doing that. It will change color. Now I'm in, this is a plain bit, but so I will show them a variegated bit and then I will show them what it knits up like. And they're like, right, right. So I know they're not completely getting it, getting it. And they were like, oh, so this is how those Norwegian style uh, sweaters are knit. It's just the yarn. And I said, no, that's really uh, a knitting technique. So <laughs> um, they thought it must be super easy to knit a sweater if the yarn is like this, which you know, you, you could knit a sweater with this actually. That, that would be really nice. Okay, I'm rambling. So, uh, just a vanilla sock, uh, but I will be doing a afterthought heel just to make the most out of the yarn. Um, yeah, they, they will be for my mom. My mom loves lavender and lavender fields. We used to go on holiday to France every year. Um, and she would just, every time we see a lavender field, we had to stop over and, you know, sniff the lavender, take pictures, and, um, she would buy lavender soap everywhere, and, uh, yeah, just memories. So that's why I'm knitting these for her. And I've also been crocheting just a little bit on my breeze blocks. So I think I'm halfway done with the cake now. This is Escapius Whirl. And the breeze blocks that I'm crocheting. So it's the same design as the shawl I am wearing. And it uh, matches my dress. <laughs> I like to wear this, uh, these two together. Although sometimes it's a bit too much, but whatever. Um, so I'm crocheting this one now. And yeah, I just, I can't wait until it's finished. Um, I just did, so the alpaca stitch marker right here, the one from Star Fiber studio which i showed last time it's so cute um so i did one two three rows since then so it's not a lot but um yeah crochet is what gives me the most wrist pain so i'm just um yeah not risking it and uh i could not work on this while Momo was near because, you know, she just claws at it and yeah, it was just impossible to work on it and it's too big to take to work. So um, the sock project is what I've been able to do uh, since I was not at home. So there is a crochet along going at the moment for the Breeze Blocks shawl. And I've extended the deadline. It was, uh, it started June 1st and I placed a deadline at August 1st um, when, when I started the cowl. And now I've extended it until September 1st. I might even extend it longer because, you know, it is, you know, a kilometer of yarn that you need to uh, crochet. So that is quite a lot. And you know, I would also like to finish my own breeze vlogs during the cowl. So, um, yeah, and some people have requested an um, extension. So I'm extending the deadline until September 1st, until further no notice. And yeah, uh, 
So there's a chatter thread in the Ravelry group, which is the New Leaf podcast group. There's also a finished objects thread and um, as always, all of the chattering goes into the chatter thread and the finished objects photos goes in the finished objects thread. And um, I believe there are two or three breeze block shawls already finished and a couple more on the way. And be sure to also tag your pictures on Instagram with breeze blocks cow. And that's with a C because it's a crochet along and not a knit along. Oh, I feel my hair is like super fuzzy today. So as I was saying before, I have been spinning a lot uh, the last few weeks because uh, I felt it was less less of a strain to my wrist and uh, it is tour de fleece, so a good excuse to start spinning again. I haven't spun in ages. Um, and I had this camel fiber. It's like a cloud. It's so fluffy and Oh, it's just super soft and it's really nice to spin with. I have recorded a little clip that I will uh, put in right after this. Uh, I have finished the first bobbin and I haven't spun it very regularly, but um, you know, spinning is just for fun for me, so I'm okay with that. Oh, I think Momo might be coming to take a look. Hey, Momo. She's just just finished her nap. Okay, maybe later. Um, yeah, so it's really nice to spin with camel fiber, and because it just it comes apart really easily, so you don't have to pre-draft or anything. And I've recorded a little clip, so take a look. So this is the camel fiber I was telling you about. You can see it's very um, curly and fluffy and just very uh, loose. It's not really combed uh, in, uh, in a way that merino top is usually combed. This is just, just a very fluffy um, fiber. And... And it's very easy to just draft from the fiber as is. And you don't need to um, prepare your fiber for the spinning. Because usually with merino, um, with merino top roving, I have to pull out several um, just thinner pieces of fiber so that I can spin those. But with this one, you see that it, the fiber just pulls apart very easily and that makes it very easy to spin just right from the fiber without any preparation. So I'm really enjoying that. Um, that also means that the fibers are very short uh, so it couldn't, you know, here it pulls apart easily. That also means that it could break easily as well. Uh, I haven't had a lot of difficulties spinning this, but I wouldn't recommend it to a really beginner spinner uh, just because of this, because, you know, it might not be as easy to work with right from the start. So, I recommend this for adventurous beginners because I consider myself a beginner spinner, but this, you know, it takes some getting used to, but I find it really easy and, you know, you can see I'm not really paying attention to the thickness of the yarn. I don't spin very fine, so it's a lot of, you know, thick and thin in places, but I don't mind that. I just, you know, I spin for fun, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And frankly, I quite enjoy working with thick and thin yarn, 
so yeah I don't really see why I should spin very fine if I want fine yarn I'll get it in a store I think um, yeah so I really like working with this fiber yeah as you can see it goes very quickly so this is what I have done uh, from yesterday evening, I think. And it's spinning up really nicely. And here is Momo! Hey! <laughs> there she is. She's purring like crazy. Oh, I think she's feeling playful. Here's Momo. Hey, I think she sees herself. <laughs> she's such a cutie patootie. Hey, yeah. Oh, she's so pretty. Mm. We're so in love with Momo. She's really... She's just so sweet and... Oh, she's so cute. So soft. Yeah, so as you could see, sorry, I was distracted. As you could see in the little clip, um, it just, the camo fiber just drafts apart really easily. And, you know, as I said, I wouldn't really recommend it for a total beginner spinner, but I still consider myself a beginner. So, you know, if you're an adventurous beginner, you like to learn new stuff, you know, I say, why not? Um, I like, you know, working with new fibers and, you know, I think that was, that is what makes spinning fun and not, you know, tedious, uh, since it is just, um, a singular color. I don't think they have a lot of hand dyed camel fibers. Uh, so along the same lines, I have been spinning with some silk hankies. Oh, Momo is on the spinning reel right now. <laughs> there's this little, you know, with the louette in, in the spinning wheel, there's this hole. And, you know, if you spin, the hole, of course, also spins around. And I'm always terrified that she'll put her head in there while I'm spinning. And, you know... <sighs> But, you know, it hasn't happened yet. She's just, you know, grabbing the yarn. So, silk hankies. I bought these more than a year ago while I was still in my apartment. So, one of the very first few episodes. And, um, uh, I just think spinning with something you've never spun with before is really... Uh, nice to rekindle the love for spinning so to to get back into it and so I took out my silk hankies and it was my very first time spinning with it and I, I recorded some or I took some pictures for my Instagram stories and the thing is so this is multiple silk hankies and they're uh, they're hand dyed uh, I got them from a uh, UK ex Etsy shop and you pull them apart you see it's like super thin oh Momo's getting interested uh oh put that away so this is what one silk hanky looks like super thin She loves crinkly stuff. Oh. Sneak for you. 
And so with one silk hanky, <laughs> kind of scared because Mom was on my lap, um, you poke a hole in the middle, just pull it apart, and you keep Mom, Mom, Mom. Me. Hey, he's even eggs on the And so you keep pulling it apart. See? Basically until you have one big loop. And then you just continue to pull until, you know, it's thin enough to spin with. Uh, because, you know, you want some yardage out of this because um, you know, it's, it's silk, so it's expensive, so you only get so much. Uh, so you want to make the most out of it, so I usually want to spin uh, very thin. And when, with silk, silk is very strong, so you can just pull it until it's like very, very thin. And it will still produce, you know, a good strong thread. And uh, you also have to take into account that silk uh, that the fibers are very long so if you pull like this it won't pull apart because um, you know because the fibers are too long or longer so you um, take the longer bit and just pull and I just do this for the entire loop and whenever I pull too much so that there is a weak spot I usually use use that spot to break it and then I have one continuous thread to spin with so I'm gonna put those away now I will show you what I have spun with them so far so it's really not a lot but um look at this it's just really fun to spin with it's really shiny and uh really thin in places like here you can see there's just just a really Thin thread here. I'm actually thinking if I should uh, do some embroidery with this because it is thin enough to embroider with and you know that way you can do a little bit more with the yardage so I'm thinking of doing that and uh, actually when I started it was so thin that I actually spun it onto the ridge of the bobbin by accident, like, <laughs> you can see that, there's this, um, it just spun right into the, right into that, and I don't even think you can see how thin this is, see that, it's really, really fine, yeah, so this was really fun, and, um, hey, mama. And so I had started with the silk hankies. And then I started to spin with the camel fiber, but I wanted something more colorful. Oh, you're such a sweet little kid. Mm. So I wanted something more colorful, but I didn't really have anything in my stash. I only have white and brown and gray. And so I got some new goodies from an Etsy shop, also from the UK, called... What are you doing? He's grabbing his tail. Uh, from an Etsy shop called Shunkley's. Shang Shang please. <laughs> and I got two bats from that shop. And sorry, I was so distracted. Um, 
So uh, she's called Shung Please. It's on here. It's on the see below. There's the website. So they also have their own website, shunklees.co.uk, but I um, bought some of their bats via Etsy. And this is Wild Rose Garden. It's 60% fine merino wool. <laughs> He's licking me. <laughs> it feels like sandpaper. 15% um, rose fiber, really. I hadn't even seen that. 15% sari silk fibers and 10% tesset silk, and it's 100 grams. And this is it. It's huge. Look at this. Look at this. It's bigger than Momo. And I was going to take it apart for you, but since Momo's here, maybe not the best idea. Maybe wait a little bit. I got that one and I also got a bat called Autumn. It's 60% fine merino wool, 20% white tussa silk and 20% golden sari silk fiber. And it's also 100 grams. And this is it. I, I love this one. Um, colors are stunning um, there's even some blue in there and some purple so I really love that there are um, many more colors in here than on first sight and I think if I open it up that there hey bless you that there will be even more colors in there and then I got these my very first Rolex I have never spun with Rolex, and uh, these are called Mardi Gras Sparkle. Ow! Ow! Don't do that. Hey, what are you doing? She's hunting flies. Okay. <laughs> um, so take a look. That's amazing. Uh, so it's uh, Fine Marino Bull and Angelina Sparkle. I've never spun with Angelina before. So really excited about that. So I'm gonna spin... Um, so with, with Rolex, you have the potential to do a variegated uh, hand spun. So... Um, take it apart like this and then I believe you just you know start spinning from one end and it gradually goes into the next color um, so I'm thinking uh, to you know if I start with yellow and finish the whole row lag and then start the next um, row lag also from the yellow and then at the end just do a chain ply so to keep that color sequence intact. So that will be really fun to spin with. And now Momo is no longer on my lap. I can open up these bats. So this is the autumn one. Wow. Look at this bat, it's amazing. And you can open it up even more. Whoa. Look, look. I could just look at this all day. I'm so excited to spin with this. Okay, it's getting in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at the rose bat, wild rose. Let me see. 
wild rose garden, right, with the rose fiber, and I'm not sure what the fiber is, what color, okay, wow, <laughs> okay, wait, so it's mostly white here, okay, so, yeah, mostly white on the outside, but then, bam, it's pink, bam, <laughs> I think I actually touched the tripod, sorry. Um, yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Getting in my nose. So, I must say, I must say this is looking really um, different from, from the picture I saw on, um, in her shop. But it's all made to order, I think. It didn't say that, but um, when I got the uh, order confirmation, um, she said that she would get those items um, made as soon as possible. So I'm guessing that she makes them to order. So what you see is not necessarily identical to what you get. But still, you know, I, I haven't bought these bats specifically for projects. I just buy these bats for fun spinning and, you know, bubblegum pink is still, you know, hell of a lot of fun. So, and you can see also the sari silk in here. I think the colors are really, um, really telling. Um, I'm not quite sure, but you really recognize that this is sari silk because, you know, all of those really bright colors. Um, so that's all the way through here. Um, oh, and it's super soft. The white fiber is super soft. What could that be? So there is, uh, there is Tessa silk in here. That could be it. But still, I don't know what the rose fiber is. Maybe this? No, I, I have no clue. I have no clue. Maybe it's also mixed in, in the white. Anyway. <laughs> it's like a blanket. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have so much fun spinning from this. So much fun. And I can't wait until I finish the camel fiber. So I can work with this. And um, I bought this on... Oh, I don't really remember. I think on Thursday or Friday. And it arrived on Tuesday. So that was really good considering, you know, it's made to order and it's from abroad. So yeah, pretty good. And the shipping was really reasonable as well. I think almost the same as if I would buy something from within the Netherlands. So yeah, so, uh, but I find that a lot of the time shipping from UK to Netherlands is really, really reasonable. So I frequently buy from the UK for that reason. That wasn't the only thing that I got this week. I also received a cute stitch marker from Shiny Stuff Creations and she is Dutch. And she makes uh, polymer clay charms and then she uh, makes them into bracelets or earrings or keychains or chip stitch markers. And I got the pizza slice. It's so cute. Oh, focus, please. It's a pepperoni pizza or, you know, salami pizza. And it's so cute and the crust is you know, it's just really, really well done. It looks as if it's really edible. And every time I look at it, 
I get a craving for pizza. <laughs> yeah, so this was uh, another one of my birthday presents from my boyfriend. He bought uh, some uh, stitch markers for me. And uh, yeah, so that arrived this week. And lastly, I also got a fun crochet book to review. And the book is called Crochet in the City. Colorful Patterns That Burst Into Bloom by Anna-Marie Bentham. And uh, Anna-Marie also has a website called Anna-Marie's Hack Blog or Anna-Marie's Crochet Blog. And this is her book. And it's published by Freubelweb, which is a really well-known Dutch craft website and kind of, um, um, you know, kind of like Ravelry or Pinterest, kind of, you know, it's just a collection of uh, patterns and, um, you know, you visit Freubel Web and then you click on the pattern and or you click on the picture and then you go to um, the actual um, website uh, of the designer where you, can, where you can find the pattern. So it's like a collection website-ish. So I kind of um, think it looks like a Pinterest and uh, new patterns are featured every week and um, they have um, set up their own like, publishing agency so that's really cool and um, this is their first book um, and Anna Marie is also she's just in the, in the land <laughs> in the Netherlands oh my god like why did they make this word so difficult for the Dutch to speak like we cannot say th. so Netherlands, Holland. That's that's why we always prefer to say Holland because it's easier. So anyway, Anna Marie is quite a famous Dutch uh, crochet designer, and uh, but uh, I'm not sure if she also writes her blog in English. But the book is in English, also. So um, it's uh, it's one version, and there's. Dutch and English on the same page uh, and it has a lot of um, home decoration uh, patterns um, so you have pillows and blankets but also shawls I believe and see this a really pretty pillow and she uses very fresh and modern colors. This is another one of my favorites. So the book is in English and Dutch at the same time. So uh, here's the Dutch part and here is the English part. And the book is laid out in such a way that um, it says what you need for the pattern um what crochet hook and which yarns and it might have a crochet schematic if the pattern calls for that uh i just saw an amigurumi pattern right here and of course there is no uh crochet schematic for these uh so it just says the materials and then the patterns the actual written out patterns are included at the back in a separate file and I actually think this is perfect um, if you're going on holiday and you want to um, crochet one of these projects um, then you don't have to take the whole book with you but you can just take the leaflet with you and um, I believe it's just one big it's just one big sheet so uh, but the instructions for each uh, pattern are included on one side so you don't have to um, like turn any pages so it's really compact uh, compact condensed um, so that's really nice for crochet on the go um, I must say the um, patterns in this book are really beginner friendly they seem to um, be you know relatively easy and small 
So that is perfect for beginners. Look at this. This might be my favorite. It's on the cover as well. And um, Luce from the publishing agency uh, gave me this copy to review. So I will be um, browsing through the patterns uh, in more depth and maybe even making one of them because they're really fun and quick, um, or so they seem. So suggest these necklaces look so cute. And she mentioned uh, let's see. All right, so the the writer of this book, the designer, uh, Anna Marie, Anna Marie Bentham, uh, she will be giving workshops in October and November uh, during the knitting and stitching shows in London and Dublin. So that might be a lot of fun. Um, and uh, the book is also for sale um, abroad, so not just in Holland and um yeah but also online i believe and um yes go check it out it's a perfect uh perfect holiday projects um as i said with the takeout patterns and um i will be um i think i will have a lot of fun browsing this in more depth in the near future so that was it for me for this week. Um, I will go back to my spinning wheel, I think, and finish that second bobbin of camel fiber. And then I just can't wait to use one of the bats uh, by Shankly's. And um, I will I will link to them below. But as always, I will uh, put all the names in the screen as well. I hope I will have some more finished objects uh, spinning wise and some more knitting and crochet to show you next time. Uh, I wish you a very uh, crafty couple of weeks and see you all next time. Bye bye. Thanks for watching.